Before the First World War began, the Ottoman Empire stretched from modern-day Turkey to as far as what is now Egypt, Sudan, and the Middle East. The Arabs living in the Middle East were not happy under Ottoman rule. The, during World War I, the British convinced a group of Arabs, led by Sharif Hussein, to revolt by telling them that after the war they would be given land in the Middle East. This weakened the Ottomans, and at the end of the war their empire crumbled. But they weren't the only group that wanted control in Palestine. Zionism was a Jewish political movement that believed the Jews should re-establish themselves in the Holy Land of Palestine. They believed that the only way for Jews to be respected again and to be free of persecution was to have a Jewish state. During the war, the Zionists put pressure on the British government to give them Palestine. Some were sympathetic to the Jews, like Arthur Balfour, the Foreign Secretary for Britain. He sent a letter to leaders of the Zionist movement in 1917 stating, his Majesty's government view would favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people, and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this object. This was known as the Balfour Declaration. In the aftermath of World War I, the League of Nations, a forerunner to the United Nations, split the Middle East into mandates for the French and British. Britain was given the mandate for Palestine. The family of Sharif Hussein was given right to rule under Britain, although they did not have total control. Britain allowed only 1,500 Jews to enter Palestine per month, which angered the Zionists. This began an era of illegal immigration called the Aliyah. Fast Bet. forward to 1933 when Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany and the Nazis rose to power. The Nazi party imprisoned and enslaved Jews in death camps with awful conditions and by 1945, two-thirds of the Jewish population in Europe was killed. After liberation, the Allied forces encountered a problem. When Holocaust survivors tried to return home, they found them occupied by other people. There was still a lot of anti-Semitism, and many returning Jews were beaten to death. To solve this, the Jews were sent to displaced persons camps by the Allied liberation forces. The DP camps were often just partially renovated concentration camps where there was little food and a strict curfew. The Holocaust survivors were trapped, and as news spread about the awful conditions, American Jews felt the need to help. American Jewish families donated money and volunteers for the Haganah, a partially terrorist, Palestine-based military group to get Holocaust survivors into Palestine. With the funding from the Jewish American families and businessmen, they were able to buy large ships to sell refugees to Palestine. The Haganah sent a Palestinian representative named Ze'ev, or Danny Shin. He was sent to the United States by the Haganah to set up and run Ali Abed operations there. He had two main jobs, to gather ships and people to work on the ships. Shind worked with Morris Ginsburg, an American Jewish businessman who came from a well-respected family to purchase the ships. Ginsburg worked as an intermediary to buy the ships, and the men set up fake companies to purchase the ships under the guise of shipping bananas. The ships were repaired, then registered as Honduran and Panamanian ships. Recruiting people was a different story, as the Haganah wanted young, fit people, and they needed to be very secretive. They explored every resource available. They contacted Jewish World War II veterans and Jewish American youth groups. We're brought to Baltimore, down on Lancaster <laughs> Street, and crewed by people who were ex-military, and sailors, some of them not sailors, they knew what they were doing. The young men were called and given cryptic messages about when and where to meet secret contacts. In this secretive way, money exchanged hands, ships were bought, and volunteers were gathered. However, sailing into Palestine was not an easy job, as a British blockade of lines of warships guarded Palestine from immigrant ships. The goal for the ships was to beach themselves on the shore of Palestine and make a run for land where they could hide, which only a handful of ships achieved starting with the Josiah Wedgwood and ending with the Kibbutz Galut and Atmuts. North Americans sent a total of 10 ships over a period of two years that brought 31,000 refugees to Palestine. Each boat encountered their own problems, but for the most part they had similar journeys. Each ship was renovated to include sleeping bunks for refugees, but most of the ships had technical malfunctions due to the age of the ships and the shape they were in when they were purchased. Inevitably, all the ships encountered the British Navy. Some surrendered, saying that they were not in a position to fight back, and some fought back. Eventually, all of these encounters ended in victory for the British and the refugees were sent to detention camps on the island of Cyprus with one exception. The Exodus 1947 was originally named the President Warfield. It began its mission on July 18, 1947. 
The Haganah ship sailed to France and took on over 4,500 passengers. The ship was on its way to Palestine when two British ships were spotted in the distance. The Jewish refugees on board changed the name to the Exodus before the warships were encountered. The British warships demanded that the Exodus surrender, but the refugees would not go down without a fight. They came to the conclusion that we are not heeding their command. They rent the ship. British soldiers tried to board the Exodus. The crew and refugees fought back, and three people died in the fight. The soldiers, the helmets on, uh, they had, each of them had a shield in his hand, and they were ready to jump uh, from their boat, but 800 hands were raised, and 800 cans of goods were flying in the direction of the British. A battle that was maybe one and a half to two hours, until the English uh, just threw in uh, tear gas, and we, we didn't see anything. What set this ship apart was that the refugees were not sent to a detention camp on Cyprus. Deciding to make an example out of the exodus, the British sent the ship back to France and tried to make the refugees People get People wouldn't move. They, all these passengers said, we're either going to Eretz Yisrael, the Jewish homeland, Israel, or uh, we're not getting off the ship. Then the British did something drastic. They sent the refugees back to Germany and back to the DP camps where they were forced off the ships by armed guards. The world was outraged. The exodus was in the news for over a month. People around the globe thought that the British were cruel for doing such a thing, and the Zionists used this anger to get people to favor the creation of the State of Israel. On November 29, 1947, the United Nations voted to divide Palestine into multiple sections, some for the Jews and some for the Arabs, an act that the Arabs rejected. Despite this, on May 14, 1948, the British mandate over Palestine officially terminated. The Zionist leaders proclaimed to be the Jewish state of Israel, which the United States and the Soviet Union recognized as a country. From the beginning of the Aliyah Bet, the Arabs in Palestine had mixed opinions about what was going on. The Palestinians were not happy under the Ottoman Empire and were willing to help the British defeat it. They believed that the British had promised the land to them, and yet during the 1920s, the Arabs lived in a form of peace with the Jews who were immigrating to Israel, as they were both unhappy with British rule. However, some were angered by the fact that the British allowed the Jews in at all, and this peace broke down violently in 1929. Many claimed that the very presence of Jews threatened the lifestyle of the Palestinians, and the Arabs ended up fighting the British when they tried to intervene, feeling betrayed at the British for not honoring the agreement made with Sharif Hussein. The Arabs kept fighting through the temporary truces that were enacted, and they were angry that the British were doing so little to stop the Ali Abet and the terrorism used by groups like the Haganah to force the Arabs to accept the Jews into Palestine. The Arabs were furious when Israel was recognized as a Jewish state, and they immediately invaded the new country. And since then, there have been few times of peace in what the Jews call Israel and the Arabs call Palestine. While none of the American ships successfully got their passengers directly into Palestine, most of the refugees ended up going to Palestine in the small number of immigrants allowed per month or after Israel became a country. The North American ships carried 46% of all the Ali Abet refugees that ever made it to Palestine in two years' time. During the Ali Abet, the total population of Palestine increased about 10%, mainly composed of Jewish illegal immigrants on ships, which would be like adding 26 million people to the United States population today. This era of clandestine immigration still has effects today. The Jews in modern-day Israel who come from Palestine have just as much claim to the land as the Arabs that lived there for thousands of years do. This is the root of the current conflict in the Middle East. Both parties believe that they have claim to the land, but neither wants to share, and we have a new war that is creating new refugees who once again have no place to go. History is repeating itself with more displaced people that no one wants to take in, and we still have to explore new ways to deal with these conflicts and find new homes for these refugees.